In this video, I'm going to go through the settings behind my Obsidian setup so you can see what plugins I'm using, what core plugins I'm using, how I'm using them, and all the other settings to make it look like the way that it is. So if we go over to my Obsidian, this is my daily note, and you can see the settings down in the bottom left. I have a hotkey, Control shift s but we're going to go into the settings, and we're in the editor, the top panel in the options. Now, I don't have the reading view set up because I want to edit all of the pages when I go to them. So you can change it to reading view, but I don't want it to be like Wikipedia where you go to the reading view and then if you want to edit the page, you need to go and select it. I want to just be editable straight away. So that's why I have that setting there. I use live preview because who doesn't use live preview? I don't want to be in the source mode. I don't want to see all of the, the markdown in the pages. I Once I'm out of the editing, so down in a different line, I want it to show as it would in the reading view, which is very, very useful. I don't use the legacy editor because I'm updated. The readable line length, I actually minimize the, the readable line length, which is why it's ticked. So if I was to untick this and go back to my page, you can see it's all the way down to the borders of my page. But I don't like that. I like it in the middle. That's again my preference. So when I tick that, it goes into the middle of the page. You can do some messing around with CSS, but this is the easiest way <laughs> to get things in the middle. So basically, it's, it's like centering all the words. Strict line length I don't use and show front matter I don't use. I don't use this because I'm not in the reading view. If I was in the reading view, maybe I would use it, but I can see the front matter because I can edit it straight away. What is front matter? Uh, front matter, that's this. This is the front matter of, of the page, which is basically the aliases, the tags, if you've got them in here, uh, and then this information from the community plugin, which I shared in the last video. Then we got the fold headings and the fold indent. I think this is a mandatory setting <laughs> for most people. Uh, but this allows you to fold anything underneath the heading and fold anything underneath an indent. So if I add in a heading into this page, I can't spell, but uh, and then add some letters, you can see this triangle has appeared and then I can fold it underneath. And then if I indent something underneath there, I can then indent here. And that is a setting that you need to set up inside of the ed editor panel. Moving down, show line number. You can show each line number in a page. I don't want to do that because I don't use Vim or anything else that really needs help. I don't really need it to help me navigate around the pages. We have line wrap, so I can wrap the lines within the first window. This. This, this is one of those things that if, if you want to be able to scroll all the way to the right, you can unset this. So if, if I turn this off and then come into here and then I'm just going to type a lot and lot a lot of letters and then go, you can see the page is now going. <laughs> the page is now going with it and we have a scroll. But again, I don't, I don't like seeing this scroll, so I don't want that to be there. So what I do is I line wrap the page. So that may be a setting, but you uh, need to change. Set the right text, blah, blah, blah. Don't use it <laughs> as you can see the settings the spell check settings for me and i needed to turn this on so if you want a spell check inside of obsidian you need to turn this on and you can actually add things into your dictionary so these are the things i've added into my dictionary so far you can take them out if you want but again that is a setting that i had to turn on just as like a reference because grammarly and something uh, grammarly and other things don't work well in obsidian from my experience uh, spell check languages I, I only speak english so i can only check in english <laughs> auto brackets so when i push a bracket it automatically adds a bracket like the ending bracket the finish bracket on with it this is really useful when you're adding in different links so you can put these square brackets in search for something enter and then the other square brackets are automatically added in after whatever you've selected uh, auto pair markdown syntax it's it's activated i don't use it that much smart indents list and so this this is one of those things where automatically set indentation and, and place item items directly this is one of those things with uh the bullet points in here so bullet point and then there there it is so it's automatically indented indented the bullet point and then when you push enter again, it gets rid of that bullet point. That's one of the functions that I'm used to from Notion, which is why I have it set. But if you don't like that, then you can just obviously disable it. But it will, will mean that you'll need to add. So with the numbers list, you go one dot enter. Well, word enter. But when you enter it, because you'll have if if you take that setting off, you'll then have to add like two dot and then whatever it is. So I have this enabled so I don't have to do that manually. We've got the use tabs. So I use the tab key to tab across all of those indents, which is what you were just seeing a second ago. Tab size, I haven't changed this from the default. It's at default four. Uh, I don't use Vim key bindings and the auto convert HTML is there from the auto settings, but I haven't changed that at all. Moving down to files and links, this is going to be very quick. All of the deleted files go to trash. 
that's just uh, that's an automatic setup. Automatically update internal links. Well, yeah, because I don't want to manually go back and update them, which is why you get the, the black thing at the top, the black notification menu. Well, it's black for me, uh, saying updated two links of however many. That's from this setting here. Default location for your notes. I have this set to my vault folder. So this is my main vault folder, which is called note collection. So any new note is automatically defaulted to note collection. That's my preference. You can set new notes to go to certain folders, uh, but again, I just want things to show in my file explorer. So once I've made them, they then can be moved wherever is appropriate. Uh, and this is part of my processing, which is why it's set up the way it is. New format, uh, I want it to be shortest link possible. So I don't want it to show. Uh, if, if, for example, I make a note in journal in 2021, I don't want it to show inside the brackets journal slash 2021 slash January slash and then the name of the note. I just want it to show the name of the note like this, which you can see here. Um, so yeah, there's there's that one. Uh, then we've got the use wiki links. I use the wiki links, um, which is the two brackets, rather than the other ones. So you may have seen in some other places that you can do this. I use this for external links. So you can go single bracket link, close it out. That was the, the pair in the brackets. And then I open the bracket and then um, put the link in here. Uh, you could have these sorts of links. So when I click off, there is the link. And when I click back in, there's the link. But I use the wiki links, which is the two brackets on the end. It's up to you. I actually use this for my references in my main pages. So if I quickly go to a page, let's go cognitive flow theory, because it's one all of you will have seen. Uh, you can see here that I have both of them in a reference. So in here, we've got the, the reference to Armstrong down there. This is the link that I just showed you. So I have the main reference in the first part, the, the square brackets, and then I have the link in the um, open brackets. But because I actually have this paper as a page, uh, I can open it up here, and this is a wiki link. So this is a wiki link after this normal link. Hopefully that makes sense. And if I was to go into the other view, you can see if I jump all the way down to Armstrong, this is how it displays. So it displays as there's the link. Well, there's the reference with the link on it. And there's that page link. So they're the two different links and how I use those. Uh, let's go back to my homepage. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the differences in the wiki link and the other types of links. And then the, for the images, you can see exclamation mark at the end to embed that link. Um, detect all file extensions. I want them to detect all the file extensions because I have PDF files in my Obsidian. So I want to be able to see them in search, which again, I'll go through in a second. Um, and then because it's a core plugin and then a default location for new attachments, I just have the vault folder the same because yes, most of them go to the images, but some of them don't. So that's, that's just a preference of mine. Uh, if you have all of your images and all of your files go to the same folder, you can set it up in here. So you can have attachments as a folder and you can set it up there. Appearance, again, is going to be very, very quick. Light mode, I, I'm not a dark mode user, just my preference. Uh, translucent window, I don't use that again because I... I don't want to be able to see my back screen. So if you, if I click that on, it's it looks orange, and I, I, I personally don't like that. But maybe you have a background that looks better than mine. <laughs> uh, I, I just, I just want it to be white, nice and simple. Font size, even though this is this number at the moment, it changes all the time because I have this set, which allows me to control and scroll. So if I hold control on my keyboard and then scroll with my mouse, I can zoom in and I can zoom out. So I will change this quite frequently um, whenever I'm going in and out of certain things because. When, when I have it uh, smaller, so if I show you like this, if I have it smaller like this and, and I close down these panels, oh, you can see everything else that's going on. Uh, sometimes I want to scroll in just, just because I have it as a separate panel on my screen and I've got a research paper up or I've got Zotero up. So I want to be able to zoom in. And then when I go back to the main screen, so if I uh, wiggle that up to the main screen, I then want to zoom out again because I want to see what's going on. Uh, so that that is one of those settings that is just, it's a nicety when I'm moving the panels around on my, on my screen because I have two screens. So I've got like loads of things going up. Uh, Themes, I use my own theme. It's not a public theme because there's still loads of bugs with it <laughs> um, and it doesn't work on dark mode, but I use my own theme in here. You can select any of the other themes. And what I will say, I have a video on all the custom CSS themes. Well, all of them at the time of making the video, but a lot of these themes have plugins you can pair with them, which allow you to customize the theme. So a perfect example, Minimal has a minimal plugin, community plugin, which allows you to change the colors and other settings. So that is something worth exploring if you are interested in the aesthetic of your obsidian. Now moving on to the core plugins. This is the, the main area for, for customization. The file explorer is a core plugin, which is here. 
this is the file explorer so if you've if you've seen this before that's where it is so you can disable this if you want I personally wouldn't uh, search again you can disable search but why you would disable your ability to search through obsidian I really don't know but you can disable that as well uh, quick switcher which is where you can switch through the pages so search and quick switcher are two different things this is search this is a search plugin but this is the quick switcher a different plugin so if you don't want to use a quick switcher don't and if you don't want to use a search then again turn it off but they are two different ways of searching they're not the same thing uh, so you can turn one off or keep them both on graph view i use a graph view because it's a network thought i don't typically I don't, I don't use the main graph view because it's just so hectic but i do use the local graph view which is down in my side panel here you can see it's next to my heading so i can see what is connected with certain things so if I go back a day um, let's go back another day uh, oh yeah I know because I've changed that I've changed the filters there we go made a mistake um, so I have working notes filtered in uh, that's from an old setting so let's go to let's go CLT again because it's just an easy note to go to so I can see all of the working notes so extended cognition stores education retrieval practice ecological dynamics uh, and all of the related working notes rather than all the all the notes in general wow uh, that's quite zoomed in so that's that's how I use the graph view I don't use the main graph view uh, I've, I've gone through how exactly I use the graph in another video backlinks if you if you're using obsidian i don't know why you wouldn't be using backlinks is kind of the point <laughs> um, so that's that allows you to wiki link between different pages outgoing links i don't use them which is a panel up here so this is the backlinks panel which allows me to see all the backlinks outgoing i used to use them but i stopped using them because what i actually realized is these links here are what i end up clicking on most of the time and all the outgoing links because i've cleaned up my pages i'm not using it anymore i was using the outgoing links to get through the pages that didn't have the links but now my pages are more organized because I understand them and I have the links there. I didn't need the outgoing panel, but you may need it to start with. Tag pane, I started using tags, so I wanted the tag pane. The tag pane looks like this, and this allows me to embed, uh, I, I guess embed, indent certain tags. So you can see up here we've got working and done. So working and done, that's how it's formatted. I formatted it in the YAML, so the front matter, up in the top of the page. Uh, and this is how I use the tag pane. You can see the numbers on the side, and when I highlight them, you can see how many are in there. That's very nice to see. And I'm actually almost ready to stop using the Kanban with the tag pane. Uh, page preview. This is the pop-up. Now, I didn't. Th this wasn't set up for me, but I think this is uh, this is useful because what it allows you to do is when you hover over something, it pops it up. Now, with the settings, this will be different. So if I hover over any of the things in the backlinks panel, it doesn't pop up unless I push Control on my keyboard, and now it shows. And w what I found is when I'm scrolling through this, if it pops up and I go down too quickly, I actually end up going down on here, and I'm like, ah, oh, I wanted to go on the next one. So that was one of the irritations I had, which is why I changed the settings in here. So because this is a core plugin we can come down to the plugin options and we can see the different settings the backlinks panel um i yeah i don't want them in the documents i want them on the side which is why i don't have this one ticked command palette i don't use because i use hotkeys the daily notes plugin which i'll go through in a second these are the this is the setup so this is the date format that i use this is the folder that they're currently going in um because i it's 2022 not 2021 then we have the daily template that I use again uh, a link in description for that one file recovery that's just being able to access different recovery but going to the page preview which is what we were looking for this says require con control to trigger page preview on hover so you can see the backlinks the outgoing links in the search panel I have to hold control to be able to see that that's what this setting is I don't want to have to con hold control for reading view editing view Kanban um, and then file explorer and graph view are the same as the other ones because when I'm when I'm scrolling through these three views, typically I'm I'm moving my mouse up and down to see what's going on. So I don't want it to pop up every single time because then you end up hovering over the the, the page and then you end up going on another page and you're like ah get out of my way. <laughs> so that was one of the frustrations and frustrations I had with the page preview. Now if we go back to the core plugins, we can see the daily notes panel, which I've just gone through uh, gone through. So you can see the settings options there. Then we've got the templates link in description I want the templates because I want to be able to dump in all of those templates which in the file explorer are stored here this is the file that I store all of my templates in which again are, are linked in description so if you want those templates you can get them but if you turn that off you won't be able to use the core plugin for templates uh, note composer allows you to merge notes together that hurt uh, you can merge notes together where 
th this is really useful with me combining some of my smaller notes because I'm not using the traditional Zettelkasten. I'm still using the theory behind Zettelkasten, but not using traditional Zettelkasten. I've got a video about that if you're interested. Uh, command palette, I use it if there is a, a command or a thing that I need that I don't use very often or I need to remember what the hotkey was for something. So when I come into here, say, oh no, I can't remember how to how to use Note Composer, I can go P and then Note Composer and here it is and I can see Control or N is actually that shortcut for it. Now having said that, one of the other plugins that I use, the core plugins that I use, is a slash command plugin. So I could go to the, the command palette and find it or I could go to the slash command and it basically does the same thing. So those of you that are uh, familiar with Notion or other tools that are similar, you may be uh, more used to going slash and then trying to find whatever it is. So if I go note composer, there you go, there's that, there's that option. So you could slash search for a command instead of looking for it in the command palette or having to scroll through all of the different hotkeys, which is just a pain. The editor status is actually something that's fairly well hidden. It's down here. This is the editor status. So you can see I'm on live preview. If I click, we've got reading source and source mode. If this option doesn't appear, it's because you don't have the editor status enabled, which is one of those small things that you, you may you may you may experience. I've seen that question asked in the Obsidian Discord a few times. Markdown importer. I don't import any markdown from anywhere because everything's in Obsidian, so I don't have that activated. Oh, the start panel. Uh, star panels here. I use it every day, all the time. You can see a couple of articles I'm working on, a couple of the like, couple of the pages that I'm working on, and then some default pages that I go to almost every day. Uh, we have the Zettelkasten prefixer because I don't use Zettelkasten. I don't need the prefixer. <laughs> uh, random note. I, I never need to go to a random note because all of my notes are organised and methodical. Or oh, I say all of them. The majority of the notes are organised and methodical. There are still some notes that are in the back end. Don't need to worry about them yet. Um, you can look through my notes. Link in description because I have Obsidian Publish, which you can see uh, down here. Obsidian Publish. That is a paid plugin. So. If, you, if that's not ticked, you'd need to pay for it. I have Obsidian Sync because I have Obsidian on my phone, uh, which is this plugin. Uh, outline, I use all of the time. Word count, it's there, but I don't typically use it. Outline is this one right here. Uh, so if we go to, let's go to Cognitive Load Theory again. This is a nice demonstration page. We've got all of these different points. And if you come, if you click, you can you know, go all the way down. You can toggle certain headings, open and close. This actually solved one of the issues for my longer writing in Obsidian because they updated this, which was very nice. Uh, and you can see here we've got videos. We've got these things underneath videos. And we've got to do as a heading and these things under this. If I move this up and go there you can see it's moved the whole section which is very nice to see uh, I'm going to move that back up there uh, and you can move around sections quite easily with the outline plugin and you can toggle things shut so if you do have really long pages it's easy to see which is it's just a nice thing. Now, something else with the outline plugin, which some people may not know, is you. this outline plugin is for the active page. So if I open up this page again, um, here twice, if I click on this, it's going to go measuring load for both pages. If you want an outline for this page, you can come up to the three dots um, and then open up. I've got a hotkey for it. <laughs> uh, and then you can open up an outline for it. And what this does is it means this one, this outline plugin is specific and linked to this page. You can see I'm moving up and down here, but this outline is still just global. So this is globally picking up that page, whereas this one is specific to this page, which is nice. If you wanted a, an outline plugin specific to this, again, you do the same thing, open it up, and then you close down the side paddle. Now you've got an outline for this page and an outline for this page. That is something that you can do with the outline plugin that some people don't realize. Uh, and I know it took me time to sort of get my head around. So I thought I'd let you know. Right. Uh, scrolling all the way down to the bottom here, we've got the slides. I don't present through Obsidian, but if slash when I do start presenting my PhD research, I will probably use this to create presentations rather than PowerPoint because... I can do it in my notes and I can link all my notes around and just jump through all of the hyperlinks and the backlinks, which is just much nicer. I used to use Audio Recorder all the time for my audio journal. Now I use uh, StreamYard, which is what I'm recording this video on. Open app and default, don't need that. Workspaces, I use all the time. File recovery very quickly is just being able to access the... Uh, the ooh, it's down... Yeah, which is just being able to access uh, your, your files once you've deleted them basically from there. But I actually go into my re recycle folder on my computer to do that. But workspaces is here. 
manage workspaces and this is a plugin so you can save certain workspaces which I've gone through uh, in a previous video how I use these but I use these all the time so control shift O H and then I go to my home plugin and then I push control Y to go back to my mainly my, my daily note that is something I use every day and then my board view is here I don't use this one as much but this just resets everything so when I'm working and adding in outline panels and moving things around this just brings me back to home and I'm like right okay let's go again so that covers all of the settings in my Obsidian setup. If you do have any questions about how I'm using Obsidian, make sure you check out this video of my early 2022 setup because that's the most up-to-date setup that explains how I'm using Obsidian at this point in time.